as failing, just like say whatever you can you consume the most in your heart, that's what's gonna come out. If you got envy in your heart, if you got strife in your heart, jealousy in your heart, fornication, anything that's in your heart, God can't, can't do it. That's why each day it's important that we um that we do a self check, that we that we examine ourselves. We don't walk around in self deception, thinking that we live one way when we truly live another way. Go with me to, to John ten ten. When you get that, say Amen. I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. It says, The thieves come only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I, I came that they might have life and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full and to the overflow. So God, he didn't come that we just live on this earth and just barely make it. He came that we might have life in abundance to the full and to the overflow. He wants to overflow in every area of our life, in our finances, in health, in relationships, and all that we do. God wants to overflow. So when you overflow in your life, you have nothing needed, nothing missing, and nothing wrong. That's just like when you go to a restaurant and you done ate and you full, you don't have room to this for dessert. That's how God wants us to be. He wants to be so full that we have nothing missing. When somebody come ask us, do we need anything? We won't have no need. Our main goal is to, to be a blessing, to bless people, to prevent misfortune from happening in people's lives. And the only way that we're going to reach that level in life is, is through the love of God. And the love of God was shed abroad in our lives so we can draw people close, not so we can, so we, we can't worry about people misusing us or mistreating us or we being a weaker vessel. We got to walk in love. We got to love the unlovable. And we got to make sure that we do it not, not for the pleased man, but we do it to please God. Amen? Go with me to Ephesians 3, and we're going to look at verses 17 through 20. Ephesians 3, 17 through 20. When you get this, amen. amen. I'm reading the Amplified verse. It says, May Christ, through your faith, actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deeply in love and founded securely on love. So that word dwell, we see here, means to settle down, abide, make his permanent home. So how many of you know Christ ain't going to dwell nowhere where his filthiness? He's not going to dwell nowhere where sin abides. God is going to want to dwell in a pure heart, a clean heart, a heart that's filled with love. So if you got strife, envy, or anything that opposes the word of God in your life, Christ's not going to dwell there. That's just like for you, friends. If you go to a hotel and, and you're spending your money or you go into that hotel and you're on vacation, you're not going to want to spend your money and abide in a room that's nasty. If you go to your hotel room and you paid your money for that room and you go into that room, that room is filthy and that room is nasty, you're not going to want to abide there. And the same thing with God. God is not going to want to abide in our hearts. And if, if our hearts is full of full of things, it's full of corruption. Christ wants to dwell somewhere that's pure. And a lot of times we do things and we and we try to get man's approval or worry about the man see us and not even worry about if God sees us. God sees everything. But when we do things in life, it seems like we do things to be man pleasers, to try to get the attention of man instead of getting the attention of God. And how we get the attention of God? By walking in love, by living a, a life that's acceptable and holy unto him. The Bible says, be ye holy, for I am holy. But a lot of Christians, they think just going to church on Wednesdays and Sundays, they did they, they good deed for the week. But you truly got to live this word. Whatever the Bible say wrong, we say wrong. Whatever the Bible say right, we say right. We got to let the word of God dwell richly in our heart. Okay, verse one, man. Verse 18, it says that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love, which is the breadth and length and height and depth of it. Verse 19, it says that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves. So how are we going to come to know, to know the love of God? By, by having experience for ourselves. We Sometimes a lot of things that God has already blessed us with, we didn't deserve it, but because he loved us, he gave it to us anyway. And that's a lot of time with our kids. A lot of times we give our kids stuff that they don't deserve, but we still give it to them because we love them. It says, the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through all your being unto the fullness of God, may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body holy, filled, and flooded with, the, with God himself. So when you walk in love, when you let the love of God dwell richly in your heart, you're going to have a life filled and flooded with God himself. 
So if we want to reach that level of living a Zoe type of life, the God type of life, we got to walk in love. We can't just say, well, well, I, I love this person and I love this person. We got, we got to start showing it. And, and it's going to take practice. We always ask God, God, I want to be more like you. But when you ask God for it, are you truly ready for it? I know that sounds good. And a lot of times we say we trust you, Lord. But do you really trust him? It's easy to trust God when everything's going good. It's easy to trust God when you got money in your bank account and when your kids are, are acting right, when everything's going good. But do you still trust God when you don't have no money in your bank account? Do you still trust God when you don't know where your next meal coming from? That's why we got to get this word of God, the word of God rooted deeply in our heart. And when the word of God is rooted deep in your heart, can't nothing move in. So when you got love in your heart and it dwells richly, when somebody offend you, love going to come out instead of hatred. But whatever you've been meditating on the most, that's what's going to come out of your heart. So if you're meditating on watching stuff that opposes the word of God or listening to stuff that opposes the word of God, when you're faced with a chance to walk in love, you're going to fail because that's what you've been meditating on. So whatever you meditate on the most, that's what's going to come out of you. And each day that we got to get up, we got we got to confess that we set our wills to forgive any and everybody, no matter what, not for their sake, but our sake. We can't walk around with bitterness in our heart towards people because that's going to hinder our blessings. And we shouldn't let nothing separate us from the love of God, not our spouse, not our kids, not the material things, not our job. Nothing should come before God in our life. And people always say, God, I love you with all my heart and all my soul. And then it's the first time somebody wronged them, they cuss them out. Instead of instead of exemplifying godly character, instead of having integrity, instead of walking in love, they use that opportunity to, to, to use hate and bitterness. Amen? Amen. Go me to Matthew 5 and 46. When you get there, say amen. We're talking about tools that we need to develop faith. And a tool is anything that you use to get the job done. If, if, if you're a school teacher, when you go to school, your, your, your pencils, your pens, your paper, those are your tools. If, if whatever you use to get the job done, that's, that's what the tool is. And us Christians, this Bible is a tool for us. So everything that we've been believing God for, it can be manifest and we can cultivate it. By spending time in his word. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, Matthew 5, what did I say, verse 46? 5 and 46, I apologize. Matthew 5 and verse 46. Everybody there? Amen. It says, For if ye, if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. So if I love somebody that love me, that's no reward for me. Because that's easy to do. Like, it's easy for me to love my wife. It's easy for me to love my sister. It's easy for me to love Brandy. But some people, it's hard to love. So we got to practice that. We always say, God, help us with our love walk. But when we put in this situation to walk in love, we got to do it. We can't keep failing the same test. We, we got to start to develop over the situation that it once, that it once had the ability to to take control of us. So when you're walking in hatred and when you're walking in bitterness, the person that you're angry with, they have control over you because you meditate on what they've done to you. You meditate on how they treated you. It's not our business how people treat us. And I know that's a hard thing to say, but we got to make with our mind that we're going to love them with the love of God. And by you love them, that don't mean you have to be their best friend. That don't mean they have to be in your inner circle. But I heard Minister Ken say you could tell if if um if you got if you truly forgiven somebody, he said well, if they can run through your mind through the course of a day, you don't have no ill feelings toward them. He said that's how you can tell that you truly forgiven them. So a lot of times we gotta make sure that if, if if people come in our minds and that we have ill feelings toward them or we wish them bad, we gotta start judging ourselves. But we don't wanna have nothing blocking our blessing, nothing hinder us from getting to our destination in God. Amen. So. So it's easy to love those that are lovable, but we gotta make sure that that we practice what we preach. We gotta love those people. We gotta pray for them. We gotta pray for our enemies. We gotta do good to them, which despitefully use us. We got to, amen. 